actually upset. And then I moved in randomly to this house, uh, infamous 1108 Floyd. Which is mm-hmm. really the only reason cultists exist. Yeah. yeah. It's like, um, <laughs> it's a history, it's a landmark, 1108 Floyd. It is. We did hours and hours of, of jam, of recording jams of all kinds of instruments, people, whoever was over, just doing hours and hours of recording in my bedroom on the top floor next to the uh, rooftop. So we just jammed for like a few hours and chill on the roof for a while and just hours and hours and hours of this stuff. The shark chant. Um, basically, uh, I don't know. It was just a, a melody that, or just a guitar part that came out of nowhere. It wasn't really that serious and then we wrote this cool like melody and then wrote this cool harmony and then Taylor started writing lyrics. Um, which you know, I did the same the same kind of way that we did that kind of just sort of yeah, we just wrote on the spot, wrote, wrote on the spot, and then uh, I guess it's working from cracks a few times and and it looked yeah you know, had energy and yeah. so we were like dude let's just let's just keep writing songs let's just see what happens just keep writing songs and play them and then we can improvise and play songs and, yeah and that's how it happened kind of and then we started playing that not for a while it was just the two of us and then. Um, and then Caleb came back in and we added the drums and then it, especially for that song, it just kind of took that one over the top. Yeah. <laughs> but, but now we're so, like, that's <laughs> like our anthem.
I mean, I, I love like how a deconstructed drum set like feels and looks and like sounds, and having like so, all those toms and gives like a total uh, like primordial vibe to it, which I'm like totally into. Right yeah, now. totally into. It. Yeah, it just has a totally different feel. I mean, it's more and it gets people like it gives it gives us so much energy. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. It's more visceral and there's more. Uh, because people don't know what to expect when they're not seeing a drum set put together with the you know a kick drum and, and yeah, because it's, uh, cause it's not really a drum set per se. It's just it's just drums. Yeah, I just never like the physical too. Yeah, yeah it, it just it started like when we just started playing in here. Yeah, we, we just <laughs> never we just never set up the drum kit. And we, we just like let's just keep it like that. Yeah, because we just found a bunch of drums. So <laughs> since we were, since we were both and since we were doing like two people on drums at the same time, you know, like we'd be like playing over each other and whatnot. And yeah. like with a drum kit, you're kind of like trapped. Yeah. And like you're like, I feel like I'm not in the band when I'm at a drum set. Like yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm like behind this wall of yeah. stuff. How do you describe your sound, if you were to tell someone what you sound like? The only, the only way I would describe it would be fun, because it's not like, you know, um, it's not like a concrete, you know, sound, because I don't, you know, it, the only way I would be comfortable is if, if the sound is changing constantly. I don't know, I mean, I think, I think, um, we're kind of different things at different times, but I think we're all, we're all coming from really different, uh, D different avenues. Um, <clears throat> it, it, I mean, it's, it's always something different. Like we never, we always try to do something totally different. But I think that's what keeps it interesting.